sharing in the spirit any sympathy, complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united and agreeing with each other. Don't do anything for selfish purpose, but with humility think of others as better than yourself. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for the better of others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. He found himself in the form of a human. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven and on earth and under the earth may bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. It's the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated and let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather in this place, allow these to be your words and not my own. Allow our hearts to be open to see you and understand you and who you have created us to be in a new way. Amen. So as we come to week four in our Sola series, we talked about scripture as having all truth that we need and grace as the thing that provides us guidance into a relationship with God. And, and then faith is the thing that allows us to be saved by our faith. And then today we look at the, the one who made it all possible, the one who provided us this way back when we look at how Christ alone works in our life. Throughout scripture, we see that Christ alone is a teacher and Christ alone is Lord. And most importantly, we see that Christ alone is Savior. As I was preparing for this sermon, I was trying to figure out the best way to explain this idea as Christ the teacher and how it impacts our lives. And I came across this quote by Gandhi that I really loved. It says, your thoughts become your words. And your words become your actions, and your actions become your habits. So when we are like Scripture and we have our mind of Christ and who we are and all of what we are is that of Christ, then our words are God's words. And those words lead to our actions, which are God's actions. And those actions lead to these habits that we develop, which are God's habits that draw us closer and closer into relationship with God. Now, this is easier to say than to do. I can speak for myself on this, that there are times where I really wish I could say that my thoughts and my words and my actions and my heart were wholly focused on God. But I'm an imperfect person, and so that's not possible because there are times where I am selfish and where I am not very humble and where maybe I'm not the most obedient. And in those times... God does not become my focus, but the world around me does. And it's in these moments where I most readily, and when we all have the opportunity to turn to Christ as a teacher who guides our steps and guides our entire life. Our scripture is full of passages of Christ teaching how to live, how to love, how to care, how to walk this journey. It's really all spelled out for us. And we see time and time again how Christ was the full living embodiment of Christ's teachings. As he walked this earth facing the scrutiny of everyone around him, he held to these teachings. He lived the life that God designed for all of us to live. He was and is that perfect example for us to follow. And we know that these lessons often came in the form of teaching the disciples, but as Christians, we know that that's not where Scripture stops. That it wasn't just intended for the 12 that followed him around, but that it was meant for all of us. That the parables that taught the disciples can teach us things, that the the commandments that Christ gave his followers can trickle down from generation to generation to impact our lives, to help us to grow, to help us to be better. Our scripture this morning says, complete my joy of being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility 
Count others as more significant than yourself. Let each not look to his own interests, but to the interests of others. We see in just these two brief verses that the core teaching of Christ is here, that we are called to love, to be together, to care for one another, to look out for one another as a family, and not to be looking inwards and loving only what we love and doing only what we want to do. We are called to live this life where we have to take on this cloak of humility just as Christ did to put ourselves aside and live as the person that Christ designed us to be. And the biggest joy in all of this is Christ has provided us a way to do this. We have the Holy Spirit at work in all of our lives who guides our path, who calls us home, who when we fall short or when we don't know where to turn, provides us guidance, is our carer. But when we look at Christ, we know Christ was more than just a teacher. We affirm in our creed and we believe that Christ is Lord. Now this language doesn't mean as much to us as it did in the medieval time frames because lords and ladies were a part of their culture. But when we say Christ is Lord, we are proclaiming that it is Christ's authority that we submit to, that it is Christ who we give our life to, that is Christ who we are devoted to every step of the way. If you're anything like me, sometimes Christ as Lord gets lost in the haze of, well, I can do it myself, or I know what I'm doing, God, or trust me, I've got this one. But it's in those moments where we lean on our own self that we need Christ most. And it's in those moments where Christ makes Christ's self most available. To claim that Jesus is Lord is claiming that all of who we are, all of what we ever will be or have been, belongs to Christ for God to use to impact this world in whatever way God intends. If we look in scripture, if we flip to John chapter 15, if you tuned in earlier, Ashley and I didn't know this, but she actually preached on this text this morning, and it was also a part of my sermon. But I invite you to hear this one verse. It's verse 5. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. When we abide, when we live with, when Christ lives in us, just like when we step out in faith and when we live into grace, we are able to accomplish far more than we ever dreamed possible. When we abide with Christ, when we stay with Christ, we see the bigger picture of who God created us to be. Because we recognize as Christ the Lord that Christ is the provider of everything we will need for ourselves and for the ministry around us, that Christ is the sustainer of all that we go through, of all that we experience, and there's nothing that we face alone. When we say, my Lord, Christ, at times we're saying, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know if this is the right path. I can't even see the road ahead of me. And I don't know for certain if I'm supposed to take this turn or that turn, and nor can I figure it out by myself. I, I don't have a map. When we say, my Lord Christ, we say, I believe in your desires are good and true. And I aspire for my desires to abide like yours do, to be in like mind like yours are. And I hope that I never do anything that goes against your desires. I hope that all that I ever do is who you have called me to be. When we say, Lord, we submit all of that to God. We can say, I trust you. When I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I trust you when I don't know where to turn. I trust you when everything seems lost because I submit all of who I am to you, including my worries, and my fears. Now, beyond Christ as teacher and Christ as Lord, 
we get to focus on the biggest impact that Christ had for all of us, and that is Christ as Savior. Our scripture says, And being found in human form, he humbled himself, he took on humanity, and he became obedient, even to the point of death on a cross. Perhaps this is the most beautiful picture of submission to authority. Perhaps this is the most beautiful picture of Christ's love for God's people. It is in this that we get to believe Christ is Savior. That Christ is Savior for us as Christ has been in the past and Christ will be in the future. It is in this that we get to claim that we are free from the sins that drag us down. We are free from the things that hold us back and that we no longer have to live a life of shame and darkness. But that we can take off that cloak take off that yoke that weighs us down and step into the light. Step into a new life. Step into eternal life. Step into salvation. We recognize that this gift of atonement some may call at oneness with God, while others may look at it as reconciliation. It's where the stain and the scar of sin is no more and our image is perfectly made whole in God. And we recognize that just as last week we talked that faith is the only way that this happens, that Christ is the only one who makes it possible. That Christ is our Savior based off of the self-giving love that happened on the cross and the resurrection that followed when he conquered death. There's one thing that we find clear about Jesus and his teaching and his lordship and our Savior. And it's that we serve a powerful God. A powerful God that we can't really fully understand how powerful God is. See, it's not the power that we're accustomed to with military leaders and battles. It's not the power of politics. But it's even more than that. We see that Christ never attempted to raise an army or to conquer people. Nor did he try to be best friends with those with power. But Christ did the complete opposite. He intentionally sat with those who had no power at all. He intentionally walked with those who were viewed as nothing in society. He intentionally loved those on the margins. He intentionally served those who religious leaders had traditionally pushed out. He acquired no wealth. He acquired no power in the form of this culture's expectations, but still who Christ is and what Christ did lasted the time to the fact that today we sit in a sanctuary and we hear about how God in Christ has changed all of our lives. And while the power of Christ is not what we expected, not what those in the early church expected, that power is still real in Christ. It's the power of conquering death. It's the power of a new hope. It's the power of a new life. And today we get to see how this plays out when we share and watch in the two sacraments of the United Methodist Church, where we recognize that in baptism, we have the ability to reject sin and the death that lays upon us And we get to enter into our journey as disciples. It's in baptism where we get to reflect on all of our individual journeys. And how we get to help raise those around us in the church to know God. To know God as teacher in Christ. To know God as Lord in Christ. And to know God as Savior in Christ. And then we get to share in the Lord's Supper. We get to sit at the table with all of those who have gone before us in all in present company, and we are reminded that Christ is the host. It is Christ who calls us forward. It is Christ who calls us into relationship. It is Christ who calls us family. And we get to participate in that invitation because God's immense love for us. See, when we think about Holy Communion, when we think about the Lord's Supper, We get to focus on the self-giving love of God. We get to recognize God's grace and how grace alone changes our lives. 
We get to reflect on the sacrifice and know how Christ alone has changed our lives. And we get to know, and we get that reminder that Christ is teacher, Christ is Lord, and most importantly, Christ's love for us provides Christ as Savior. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise your name for the ways that you have poured out upon your people, the ways that you have taught us your lessons, for the ways that you have called us to submit all of who we are to you so you can make us whole and you can make us better. And Lord, for the way that you have provided us hope and eternal life and a joy for the future. When we stray, Lord, bring us home. When we don't know where to turn, Lord, help us to turn to you and help us to never forget your great love and your great power and who you call us to be. Amen.